Hello, I'm Don and welcome to my kitchen. It's the weekend before Thanksgiving 2020. So much going on. Uh, I hope everyone is well and healthy. Uh, COVID-19 is uh, climbing within the country for the second or third wave, depending on who you listen to. Um, we had an election that was one to remember, that's for sure, and it's still going on. Uh, good things? Uh, well, my Pittsburgh Steelers are 9-0 and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, today in my kitchen, we're making homemade patitsa, and it's my grandmother's recipe. Patitsa, if you don't know, is a Slovenian nut roll, and my grandmother, uh, her mother brought it over from Slovenia, which at the time was Yugoslavia, and then my grandmother made it on pretty much every holiday, and I'm going to make it here for Thanksgiving, I'll make it again for Christmas, and I'll make it again for Easter. I have a special request from my daughter Lauren, who uh, moved away this year to New Mexico uh, to pursue her career out there as a teacher, and she asked for one entire nut roll for herself to take back with her, so uh, I aim to please, and that's uh, really the purpose of uh, today. So uh, let's get started. Um, We've got liquid ingredients and we've got dry ingredients. We're going to start by making the dough. This is actually a two-day process. It won't be two days for you, obviously, but it'll be two days for me. Uh, we make the dough today. We refrigerate it. Uh, tomorrow we make the filling. We roll it out and we make, uh, make the nut rolls. So to start with the liquid, uh, we've got a half a cup of whole milk, and I'm going to just add that to a saucepan. Uh, one cup or two sticks of margarine and we're going to go ahead and get that on the heat and we want that to melt down and we kind of want to scald the milk a little bit uh, just bring it up to a simmer and cut it off and we're going to let it cool down um, in the meantime we're going to go ahead and get our yeast started for the dough so I'm going to take a large mixing bowl and I'm going to add a quarter cup of warm water I'm going to add a little bit of, I've got one tablespoon of sugar here and we're going to put a, about a teaspoon in there and we're going to put the rest in with our milk and our uh, margarine. I'm going to go ahead and add two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. Uh, this is active dry yeast. You can use instant yeast. Uh, you don't really have to proof the instant yeast. You can go directly in, uh, into your uh, flour with it. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm get this proofed as well. So we'll go ahead and take a break. Um, by, by then our yeast will be proofed um, and we'll go ahead and move on with the recipe. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I had this up to a simmer. I let it cool down and it's lukewarm. The, the thing is we're gonna be taking some egg and adding it to this mix. And if it's too hot, it's gonna cook the egg. So um, I've let this cool adequately. Uh, so we've got three whole egg yolks and I've saved the whites. The whites are gonna come in tomorrow when we make uh, the nut filling. So tonight when we refrigerate the dough, we are gonna refrigerate our egg whites as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and give a scramble to my yolks. I'm just gonna go ahead and add them right into my butter, sugar, and milk mixture. Give it a little stir. In the meantime, you can see that our, uh, our yeast has bloomed. Uh, it's fully proofed, and what, what happens with that, if you're not familiar with it, uh, is the yeast gets activated, the sugar, it feeds off the sugar that I added to the water uh, and it's got this foamy top so that shows that it's very active and that's important with any kind of any kind of dough making. So we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and add all our liquid mixture right to the yeast. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the dry ingredients and we've got uh, 405 grams of flour which is equivalent to three cups or three cups probably in the days my grandmother made this. Let me explain a little bit. 
Um, if you take your measuring cup and dip it in your flour bin and put it on a scale, you're going to see it all over the place. You're going to see 150, 160 grams. Uh, if you go to like King Arthur flour website, they're going to tell you 125 grams. Um, the proper way to measure flour in a cup is to actually scoop it into your cup. You're not going to dip it in and compact it. You're going to scoop it. And I did that and it's like equal to 135 grams. So uh, three cups is going to be 405 grams. And we're going to go ahead and add uh, five tablespoons of uh, just regular sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to take uh, a, a whisk. And this is actually a, a Danish dough whisk that I've kind of became quite fond of. It's great for making uh, sticky doughs like this one. It's great for making um, cookie dough, like chocolate chip cookie dough, uh, oatmeal raisin cookies. But I'm just going to mix it through that flour. And we're going to take and we're going to sift this a little bit at a time. I'm going to try to do about a cup at a time. And my grandmother's recipe says to sift it, so uh, I've always done that based on the advice of my grandma. So we're going to go ahead and just mix that first batch of flour in. I'm going to go ahead and do about another cup. Being that this dough gets refrigerated overnight, I put it in the bowl that I'm going to refrigerate it in. I mix it in, then it goes right in the refrigerator and I don't dirty my uh, mixer bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the last of the flour. And we'll go ahead and mix this in and we'll see if we're going to need to add any more in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a very small amount of flour, maybe not even a quarter of a cup, and I'm going to sift that in. It's starting to look really good. We want it to be sticky, but we do want it to be able to start to come together in a ball like what we've got going on here. I'm going to yet add a little bit more. And now I'm going to actually use my hands here and just kind of work that in. But the whole thing with making it in two days really came down to uh, my grandmother getting up there in age. And she said that basically um, it got to be too much to do it all in one day. So she started making the dough the night before. Um, I've made it both ways. I think it is a little bit better uh, making the dough a day ahead and letting it ferment. I don't know if you make your own pizza dough, but it's also really good if you let it ferment in the refrigerator. Um, it's good no matter what, let's face it. So um, what we're going to do is just I'm going to clean up. I'm going to cover this up and it's going to go into the refrigerator. My egg whites are going in the refrigerator and I'll be back tomorrow morning. Uh, we're going to get started with the nut mixture and rolling out our nut roll. So see you in the morning. Good morning, everyone. We're on day two of uh, Grandma's homemade uh, petites and nut roll. And um, yesterday I kind of forgot to say exactly what we can get out of everything we're doing here. So we're going to be able to get two whole nut rolls. Um, we're going to make one which is plain nut and one with raisin. And this same recipe can be used to make, make a pizza cake, which is where you take an angel food or a bunt uh, pan and you take your rolls and alternate the directions. Um, 
and basically you end up with a, a cake instead of two loaves. Today we are making the two loaves. I mentioned uh, yesterday that uh, my daughter requested one and she requested one uh, without nuts. So I'm gonna go, we're gonna get started here with making our nut filling and I can tell you what, we've, what I've done to prepare for this. Um, I buy whole walnuts, usually from like Sam's Club, and I run them through my food processor until I can get a nice ground consistency like this. Um, I've also weighed my bowl out, uh, and I'll tell you why, because we're going to have to divide this for since we are making two rolls, and it'll make it easier for me uh, to get the right quantities for each nut roll, and I do this all the time. Uh, so we're going to go get started. First, we got a quarter cup of whole milk and one stick of unsalted butter. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the microwave. We want to melt that down and warm it up. And uh, for about 30 to 40 seconds, I'll be right back. The other back. thing I have done is I've taken our, our egg whites and our dough out of the refrigerator uh, when I woke up this morning because we want everything to be back at room temperature. So we're going to go ahead and start with getting our, our egg mixture going. So take your three egg whites and go ahead and add it to your stand mixer. And I'm using a small bowl. If you have that option, a large bowl will work, but you want to use your whisk attachment. And we want to go ahead and we're going to start to beat this on high. It will start to get a frothy appearance. At that point, we're going to start to add our sugar in. In the meantime, we could, we're going to go ahead and start on the nuts itself. We're going to take one whole cup, or excuse me, a half a cup of regular granulated sugar and one teaspoon of uh, cinnamon, ground cinnamon. And I'm going to just take a whisk and whisk that through the nut uh, mix and get the nut mixture going here. So now our eggs are starting to get frothy. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to go ahead and slow it down. And I'm going to add part of my sugar in. Now this is one whole cup of sugar. I'm going to add a teaspoon of uh, vanilla extract and I'm going to add the rest of my sugar in. We're going to let it whip until it gets to be nice and floppy, uh, not necessarily real stiff like you would with a meringue. And that's going to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold this into the nuts. And then we are going to add in our butter and milk that has uh, melted down in the microwave. I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to measure or weigh out uh, my bowl with the nut mixture in it and do the math to see what half of that's going to be. That way when we're rolling out the dough and we're starting to apply our nut mixture that I'm going to actually have half of it. Roughly 18 grams per nut roll. You can, you can eyeball this, but I've, uh, in the past, uh, have made the mistake of putting too much on one roll and coming up a little short on the second roll. 
So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean up, get this set aside, and we're gonna get started with our dough. All right, so I'm back and I'm all set up now. I have to tell you, when I'm making these and I'm not doing it for an instructional video like this, I've got my kitchen table in use as well, so I'm not moving everything around like I am here, but um, for this, uh, that's what I've got to do. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the dough. Um, I told you this morning, I took the dough out, actually divided it and used the scale to weigh it. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of a cloth. Um, this is a baker's kush that I bought online. It's made of like a canvas material. It's ideal. It's, I use it for making uh, French baguettes, but uh, it can be used very well for this. And I have been using it for this. I think my grandmother just had a piece of canvas or piece of linen that she had on her kitchen table that she used. And you'll see how this comes in handy. Uh, what you are want, gonna wanna do, cause our dough is very sticky. Um, and that's just the nature of this dough, is you wanna dust your cloth. Uh, so I've got, uh, so I've got all purpose flour. So I'm gonna take out half of the dough that I divided and it's already kind of growing back together because uh, the yeast, obviously, proportionately, uh, you may get different uh, weights on your ingredients like when I weighed out that uh, nut mixture it depends on everything that's going into it in your your measurements um, so I've got half of the dough we want to also kind of press it down a little bit and get a little flour on it and you also want to get flour on your rolling pin and I'm not the best at this, and we are going to speed through the process, but I'll let you see it all. Is we're going to go ahead and start to roll out our dough, and we're going to get it real thin, and we're going to get it at the width or a little wider of my pans here that I'm using. And these are my grandmother's original pizza pans. Um, there are pans available like this online. I'll leave a link to them. Uh, they're four and a half inches by 13 inches. Uh, and internally a little smaller because it goes down on a taper. But you're gonna wanna also grease those. And I use a non-stick non uh, spray. And I use the butter flavor because it just goes better with this, this recipe. You should end up about a sixteenth of an inch thick, six, between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch thick. And if you're going to go ahead and do the raisin, um, I've already prepared my raisins and it's one cup per nut roll. And I actually poach them. So I take a small saucepan, I put it on the stove and I let it uh, come to a boil. Then I cut the heat, take it off the heat and I go ahead and I toss my raisins in let them sit for about five minutes then I go ahead and drain them it softens them up and makes them a lot uh, nicer uh, as far as the chew whenever you're eating these all right so then you're gonna take and we want to take half of this nut mixture if you remember I did the math which should be left in this bowl should be 73.9 grams. So you want to take and you want to do dollops. Bunch right about we're on target here. I like to be as precise as I can. So that's leaving me 74 grams, which is half of the mixture still in my bowl. All right, so now 
get the job of spreading this out and you want to get it spread out and it's sticky it's, it's thickened up comparably to when I first uh, uh, mixed in the egg whites and the milk but it will spread out and you want to use a nice spatula and you want to get it all the way out close to the edge as possible so we'll go ahead and just go ahead and get through this All right, so I got it spread out, and uh, it's pretty much out close to the edges in the one end, and then this will be my, my leading or my final end here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a trim to square it off. I'll put that with the rest of the dough. And I'm going to go ahead for purposes of the video turn this okay so I've turned the dough just to make it easier for me I would normally do this on my kitchen table um, so if we wanted to make it just a plain knot obviously we're going to start here I did find that a couple a little tears in here so we're going to see those as we roll it up and hopefully uh, they'll be buried within I'm going to make the first one raisin here. So I'm taking my poached raisins and I'm just going to go ahead and spread those out as evenly as possible. All right, so we start by taking our, our end and we just get it started. And then we want to start to lift with the cloth start the roll here and you want to try to get it as tight as possible so the slower you go you can see there's where I, I sprung the leak with my my dough tour. we're good on this end so we should end up pretty good here okay so I've got my greased pan and now what I tend to do now is at this point I go ahead and I preheat my oven for 350 degrees um, and then I get started on my second roll. By the time I'm all done, then it's ready for both loaves to go in. And these do actually, you want them to sit and proof. Um, basically let that dough rise again while they're in the pan. So it's good to have that amount of wait time. Now, you can see that we're a little long for our pan, which is the way it was actually planned. So I cut off the ends. you save these ends because you can bake those and make those a little bit of a treat for yourself. And I want to get the whole thing in my loaf pan. And you can make it fit. And then take a toothpick and just go ahead and puncture it. That lets any air that's down trapped in those layers come out. And usually try to mark it in some manner that it's raisin or it's plain nut. And it's easier to do if it's just raisin. So I take a fork and I make a little little R on there and that will show up with the bake so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven I'm gonna go ahead and make the other roll and then when I come back we'll get them in the oven and we'll be ready to roll okay so I've got the other one made uh, we've got the the raisin and we got the regular nut uh, raisin is a little more plump of course it's got the raisins in it 
Uh, but when they bake up, it's going to be hard to tell them apart other than the fact that I went ahead and I marked this one uh, as a raisin. I also have my cutoffs in a little cake pan with some butter uh, cooking spray. Uh, these, were all, these are all going to go in the oven at the same time at 350 degrees. Uh, these will probably take about 15 minutes and you want to take them out. At 45 minutes you want to check your loaves. Um, you want to check mainly for how dark they're getting on top. You don't want them to burn. They will get dark uh, at 45 minutes and often, almost every time, I have to take a piece of foil and I cover the tops of these and it, it, so I can get through that final 15 minute bake. Uh, in any event, when we get back, we'll have them out of the oven and we'll take a look at them. All right, we're back. I uh, just took these guys out of the oven about 15 minutes ago. I took them out of the pan and put them on a cooling rack. We did get some splitting along the sides on these. It's not uncommon. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. I probably rolled the dough a little too thin. Uh, in any event, I promise you they're going to eat well. Um, so they'll sit here and I'll have them cool. I'll have them cool for about the next uh, hour or so, and then I'll wrap them in the saran wrap and then in uh, aluminum foil, and they'll go in the freezer until we need them. I hope you like this. I'm going to leave the full recipe in, in the uh, description below. I'll leave links to also to where you can get some of the items I use today, such as the loaf pans. If you like this kind of video, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Uh, also, if you make the recipe, leave me comments below. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, so until next time, we'll see you again.